Perfect. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sanya, and I'm the marketing manager of Comfort Footwear. Um, here are my colleagues, uh, starting from the first one. We've got Salma, uh, Salman there. He's looking after the operation managers. Uh, then we've got the HR manager, Ali Hassan. And then lastly, we've got the financial manager, Samir Pamani. Um, as this is our final meeting for the shareholders, it only makes sense that we go down the lane and actually see the progress throughout all these years, starting from year 10 up till year 13. So this is our executive summary of pretty much every single thing that we've achieved in the company in these three years. Um, and as you can see here in the last section, year 13, we've been able to exceed all our investors' expectations. Um, but of course, we're going to be looking deeper into um, all these figures as we move on today. But this is just a summary. Um, some of the strategies that we've used for the company throughout are pretty consistent, and we've been able to keep them consistent through all these years. So the first one was definitely the apl application of product differentiation, and of course, the competitive price strategy, which is pretty much every company trying to achieve uh, competitive prices. But we were actually able to obtain that with our strategies. We'll talk about that further. Um, also, we were able to focus on revenue uh, maximization, just like any other business. So yeah, we were also able to maximize our revenue. Um, efficient production and distribution from plants to warehouses. And then definitely the last one is something that we were able to finally achieve in year 13, which is the utilization of spare capacity. Um, and at the moment, we're operating at 120% capacity. Uh, but of course, we'll shed more light on the debt. I'm going to pass on to Samir, and he's going to be looking after the finance sector. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Samir, and I'm the financial manager of the company. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the uh, earning per share and dividends. So in year 2013, our company made good amount of profit because of high sales revenue that resulted in earning per share of $5.81. And our management decided to pay a um, dividend of $1.15 because there was sufficient cash was available in our account. And if we talk about the uh, earning per shares and dividends, so it can be seen that earning per shares also increases in year 2013 and dividend was increased up to 1.15 cents. And next I'm gonna talk about credit and image ratings of the company. So the credit ratings of the company increased to A positive in year 2013 due to repayment of principal amount of outstanding loan. And the loan was 9.6 million roughly. And on the contrary, the image uh, company's image rating decreased by five points as compared to last year. Um, as compared to last year because of increase in wholesale prices and the company has achieved all the investors expectations so in at the initial stage in year 2010 our co company's credit rating was B positive and then in year 2011 the company's rating was A negative and it remained constant in year 2012 but in year 2013 it jumped up to A positive so um, if we talk about revenue and net profit margins, so the revenue has increased in year 2012 by 23.17 million. This is due to higher branded shoe sales in year 2013, which were a result of a strong advertising campaign and high Sigma quality rating of shoes. And the net profit has increased by 20 million as the expenses increased by 3.17 million. And if we talk about the financial ratios of the company, so it can be seen that in from year 2010 to year 2013, uh, there is an increase in current ratio, uh, there is an increase in interest coverage ratio and default risk ratio as well, but there is decline in debt to asset ratio, which is good for our company as it is only 17 cents of uh, difference. And the interest coverage ratio increased in year 2013 because of decrease in interest expense and increase in operating profit. Now I'm going to pass it to my HR manager, Ali, to continue further. Thank you. Hi, guys. As my colleague told me, I'll be looking for the HR department of the company. 
Um, we we'll start with the base wages increment, which is one person per annum, and we kept it constant throughout the year, which is that from 2010 to 2013, and it is in the contract as well. And the incentive per pair for North America, which was higher because of the dollar value in North America as as uh, comparison to the Asia Pacific. The North America incentive per pair is $1.25, and the uh, Asia Pacific is $0.40, which is just a 40 cents in North, uh, like in dollars. Uh, we also provide the best training programs for the workers, which is we spend like $3,150, and the Sigma quality program, which is $1.50 per pair. And in 2012, the company made an uh, upgrade in plant in North American plant, which is seven million around uh, turnover. And this cost, uh, like this, uh, generated more of the branded shoes. And because of that, we reduced the amount of workers in North America, um, which was from like 30, uh, 381 um, workers altogether and working in the North American plant, and uh, which are already working on the branded shoes rather than working on the private labels or in the other uh, side of the uh, plant. For the compensation per worker um, started with 20,100 in North America and 3,700 in Asia Pacific. And we ended up at 23,000 and 4,000 in both of the plants. Because of the dollar value, as you know, that the, it's lower in Asia Pacific rather than in North America. So the workers expect more in North America rather than in the Asia Pacific. And uh, we also spend, uh, well, I already told about the Sigma quality program, which is $1.50 per pair. Now I'll ask Salman to look after the operations, please. Hi, guys. I'm operational manager Salman Sadiq. I'll talk about the productivity and the pairs, worker and year. As you can see in the plant in year 10, it's starting from in North America, starting from 4,000. As you can see, it's increased slightly in year 13, it's goes to 5,232. If you compare them with the Asia Pacific, it starts from 2,500 and it goes to year 13, 2,500 and, uh, 2,525. The productivity of workers in at North America is generally higher as, com if you, as compared to Asia Pacific, and there is an increase of 53% of the pairs in productivity. Uh, the reason is increasing the productivity is only because we paid for the best training expenditure on our staffs. And uh, Asia Pacific, there is no significant change in the productivity. And if we, if we can see the comparison in year 10 and year 12, there is a slightly increase. The reason for that, if the productivity, if we compare the productivity uh, with the total compensation of each worker, then workers at Asia Pacific are more, cost, are more efficient for our company has compared to the cost. And I'll talk about the reject rate. As you can see the plant in year 10 in North America, the reject rate start from 5%. As you can see, it came slightly down to year 13 to 3.3%. And Asia Pacific is start from 7%, it's pretty higher. But in year 13, we finally came bring it that down to 4.7%. The reason is for that, because the reject rate at both plants reduced because of continued expenditure on the best practices training that we give to our staff member and provisions of incentive paper per pair. I talk about the, the branded production course of each pair of the shoes. In the, have you can see in the slides, in year 10, it's in North America, we start from $26.02 of zero, $26 zero two cents for first pair and till year 13, it came to 29.62 cents. Have you can see in year 11, it's go like higher to 31.31 cents and year 12 was 30 percent. The reason is, the reason of increase of that because we paid for this, uh, we paid for this training to our staff and the shoes, have you can see in Asia Pacific, it start from the year 10, it start from 21 and 16, Send. The reason is start decrease from there because the staff over there uh, is pretty cheap, has come to at North America. And the shoes cause decrease at both plants because of best practice training, uh, expenditure, and provisions of incentive pay. 
And I will talk about the, like, the final of the plant capacity utilization. Have you can see in year 12, North America, the plant will start from 107.6%. And year 11, it was same 120 till year 13. And Asia Pacific was 82.2%. Start from there, it came to uh, year 13 was 120%. The plant capacity was fully utilized at both plant in year 13, including 20% over time capacity. Now I will pass on for the marketing manager, Sanya. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so um, I'm going to be talking a little bit more on the marketing and then we'll wrap up because this is the last um, thing to be discussed. Uh, marketing strategy was pretty straightforward, so we were able to offer the clients 200 models, um, and the credit, the quality of the shoes, we we try to keep it at eight, and we were able to achieve that throughout. Um, the prices per pair in the internet segment was kept at 68, whereas in the wholesale uh, segment, we were not able to keep it at one price because of the market fluctuations, so we left it between 45 to 55. But we did the same the year before as well. So we left the price to be fluctuated, and that's working in our favor because we can fluctuate to our needs. Um, delivery time, in order for the retailers and the suppliers to uh, provide their services in a decent amount of time, we kept the delivery time for three weeks, which is a good amount of time. Uh, the retailer support, so there's two types of businesses. Um, the one that actually supplies directly to consumers, and then another one that directly supplies to wholesalers. Um, our focus was the retailers are supplying directly to consumers. So to, to retain them, we are actually providing them with a $450 uh, retailer support. And then a rebate offer, which is kind of like a retaining scheme that uh, people use for marketing. So we're also applying that, and we're offering a rebate of 2 to $3 per uh, pair. Uh, looking at the advertising, uh, which is actually the main thing in marketing, uh, to be very honest. Uh, so if you look at the internet and the wholesale, you can see that up till year 12, uh, 2012, we've increased our advertising expenses. And you can see a really proportional, um, directly proportional in, uh, effect on the revenue. So we were able to increase that. But in the last year, you can see that we had to decrease our internet advertising, uh, due to which we had a drop in our, um, of course, the revenue. But then on the flip side, when you look at the wholesale, um, increasing the advertising expense didn't really increase the revenue. So it's not so much proportional here. Uh, but the reason being here is because we increased our price. So when we increased the price, we lost a bit of sales there. Uh, but yeah, definitely overall, if you look at the next slide, we were able to still achieve all our goals. So this is a summary of everything that I just spoke about. Um, so basically increasing and then the proportional, so we were in decreased by this much, but then the revenue also dropped. So for the internet segment, it's, it, it makes sense, but for the wholesale, it's a bit tricky. But that's also explained why, because we increased the price per share, per shoe, that's why. Um, here, the total revenue and net profit increased due to private label bids and foreign exchange gains. Um, and that is really it. Uh, targets for the next year. So we're looking to increase more sales in each region by more advertising, of course, and price adjustments accordingly. Uh, maintain credit rating, because at the moment we're operating at a higher credit rating than the investor's expectation. So we're looking to continue doing that. Maintaining our current image rating, because image is really important when you're operating in the business market, because you can produce a lot, you can sell a lot, but if your image is not good, you're not really going to last too long in the market. So we're going to look for um, maintaining that image, maintaining expenditure on best practices training. So at the moment, we were able to um, actually operate uh, over time and over capacity because of this scheme that we've applied. We're going to continue doing that next year until we see a drastic change. Of course, this is not a one-year thing. Uh, this has to happen for a number of years for us to see a pattern in how it's serving us in our business. We only did it last year, and this next year we're also looking to uh, up, like spend a little bit more on the best practice trainings to increase workers' productivity, which will result in lower reject rates, which um, Salman already spoke about that. So far, you can see that our reject rate has dropped drastically as well. Um, decreased cost of production to increase net profit. So this is any business, when they're operating at a larger scale, they are able to achieve economies of scale. So we've been achieving that, but we're looking to do that further. 
where we can actually minimize the cost of production. And then lastly, and the most importantly, maximizing the shareholders' value and higher dividend payout because happy shareholders means happy us. So thank you so much. Well done. I think that was a very good.